Welcome to Velaction Continuous Improvement's presentation of Lean vs. Batch Manufacturing. My name is Jeff Hajek. I'm the founder of Velaction Continuous Improvement. I am also the author of the book, What Do You Mean I Gotta Be Lean? I hope you enjoy this presentation. This presentation is just an overview to get you acquainted with Lean. Rather than throwing too much detail at you all at once, let's just look at the big picture right now. If you have questions about the terms I mention, try looking them up in the Lean Dictionary on my website. Okay, let's get started. I'm guessing two things are probably jumping out at you right now. First is that there's a lot more space in the Lean company. That's pretty typical. Lean companies tend to produce more products in smaller spaces than their batch competitors. And since real estate is expensive, this is a big advantage. Second, there is much more inventory in the batch company. This is actually a big part of what drives the lower floor space requirements in the Lean Company. No parts means no need for space to put the parts. So, how much of a difference is there in inventory? A substantial one. Lean can deliver some impressive reductions in inventory. I've frequently seen well over half of the raw material and work in process removed from a work cell, and have seen instances where over 90% of the inventory is eliminated. In the small facility in this example, the difference is only a few hundred bucks but it could easily be thousands or millions of dollars difference in a larger company, and more free cash opens up more options. So let's take a minute to orient you to these two companies. LeanCo is a lean manufacturer. BatchCo is, guess what, a traditional batch manufacturer. Both currently ship in pack quantities of 10 units. In fact, it looks like BatchCo just got a shipment consolidated, so we should probably get that out of here. Let's assume that the products are identical with the exception of the customer's logo that is stamped on it. The letters are shown to distinguish those customer orders. Situations like this occur in real life when the product is customized to a specific order early in the production process. Okay, time to get some production moving. Each step in the process takes 10 minutes. The gray parts are first stamped, then fitted with green covers. Finally, each part receives some blue trim work. As you watch these parts flow, keep in mind that this is just a simulation. It doesn't take into account things like setup time, and it is rather unrealistic to think that each of these companies will have perfectly balanced lines. In truth, the cycle times will almost never be perfectly even, and there will almost certainly be some differences between the two companies. Before I continue with that thought, I'd like to point out that the first product from Lingco with the V stamp just hit the shipping dock and it's ready to ship only 30 minutes in. Look where the first V product is in Batchco. Okay, let's go back to the processes. In all likelihood, stamping each part will be faster in the batch company. After all, they probably have a much bigger, more expensive machine stamping out parts. Unfortunately, that's part of the problem. You get a local efficiency gain, but the machine drives waste throughout the system. That perceived efficiency doesn't take into account the long setup times or the downstream waste caused by the excess inventory. In LeanCo, though, you will likely see much faster processes in the final two steps. Operations that aren't done with massive, automatic machines tend to be continuously improved through relentless waste reduction in lean companies. That's not to say that batching companies don't try to get waste out of their systems, too. In fact, they use many of the same tools that lean companies do. The problem is that BatchCo starts from a bad position due to its overproduction. Overproduction is making more than the downstream process needs. In fact, overproduction is so bad 
Taichi Ono, the father of modern lean, called it the worst form of waste. You'll notice that at this point, Batchco's second step ran out of J parts to work on, so they had to pull from the next batch. That works in situations where the second pile is close by. If it wasn't, Batchco would have to keep even more inventory on hand to keep from running out of parts. Let's go back to Ono's point about overproduction. He said that it creates and hides all of the other forms of waste. Because of that, no matter what Batchco does, Leanco can do the same thing and more to reduce its waste. Until Batchco reduces its overproduction, it will remain at a competitive disadvantage to Leanco. You'll now notice that an hour and 40 minutes into production, the last V is being covered in Leanco's second step, but Batchco's covering process is just getting to work on its first one. Now, both companies have stamped the last of their V products and can begin working on the next order in the queue, customer S's products. Even though both are starting at the same time, it should be apparent which one will ship first. That short lead time, in some industries, adds yet another competitive advantage to lean companies. So now, only two hours into production, Leanco has finished the V order and is ready to ship it. It will still take Batchco three hours to get Customer V's order out the door. Whose customers do you think will be happier? That concludes this presentation. If you liked it, we offer additional related productions in the video section of our website, plus a whole lot more continuous improvement information. I encourage you to check us out and grab a free copy of the Continuous Improvement Companion, our downloadable reference guide. And as always, I'd like to thank you for watching and for using Volaction to help you get more out of Lean. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Have a great day.